In this video, I'd like to talk about finding the volume of the Manger sponge. And with this fractal, we need to think about what happens step by step. So let's look at a diagram where we can see each step of the process in creating this fractal. And we'll think about what the volume is at each of these steps and we'll be able to notice a pattern. So let's call this step zero. We're gonna start with some cube and the process is that we'll take this cube and split it into 27 smaller cubes. Or essentially each of these sides, each of these faces of the cube will be split into nine squares. And we'll do that for each of the faces, all six of them. And we'll end up with these 27 cubes that it's split into. So let me draw that very quickly. And once this larger cube is divided into 27 smaller cubes, then each of the cubes in the center of each of these faces is then removed. And the cube in the very center is removed as well. So if we start by saying that V0 is the volume at the starting point, or we can call this the initial volume, then we can say that V sub one is the volume after the first step. And since we took this cube and divided it into 27 equally sized smaller cubes, and then removed the middle cube on each of the six faces and removed the one cube in the center, we've taken the 27 cubes and subtracted seven from that. So in step one, we have 20 of those 27 cubes remaining. So the volume at step one is 20 27ths of the initial volume. Since again, we're subtracting one of these center cubes from each of the six faces, and we're subtracting one cube from the very center. So we have 27 and we subtract seven from that so that we have 20 of 27 cubes remaining. And for step two, we're gonna repeat that process. We will take each of these remaining 20 cubes and split them into 27 smaller cubes. So we would follow that same process. We would split each of the faces into nine smaller squares. And when we do that for all six of the faces, we would end up with 27 cubes. And again, we would remove the center cube from each of the faces and remove the cube in the very center. So in other words, for each of these 20 remaining cubes, we will reduce it to 20 of 27. We will split it into 27 smaller cubes and then subtract seven of those so that we would have 20 of the 27 cubes that we originally divided it into. So for each of these remaining 20 cubes, we would end up with 20 27ths of the volume. So we can say that the volume at stage two is really 20 27ths the volume of stage one. And the volume of stage one, since that's equal to 20 27ths, the volume at stage zero, we can rewrite this as 20 over 27 multiplied by 20 over 27. So we can write that as squared and then multiplied by the volume at stage zero or the initial volume. And this can be a little bit tricky to think about, but basically from stage one, we had 20 out of 27 of these smaller cubes. And then each of those smaller cubes was then further divided into 27 even smaller cubes and seven were then removed so that for each of these, they now have 20 27ths of the original volume. And since we did that for all of these, the total volume going into stage two is 20 27ths, the volume in stage one. And this process, this pattern will continue. When we look at the volume of stage three, each of these small cubes now would then be further divided into 27 smaller cubes 
and seven would then be removed so that each of these would have 20 27ths of the volume of what they started with. And so the volume at stage three is really 20 27ths, the volume at stage two. And since we know this is the formula for the volume of stage two, we are taking this expression 20 over 27 squared and multiplying it again by 20 over 27. So now we have 20 over 27 multiplied three times, and all of this is multiplied by the volume of the original cube or the initial volume. And you can imagine this pattern continues. If we looked at further steps, we would keep taking our cubes and then dividing them into 27 smaller cubes and removing seven of them so that we would have 20 27ths of the volume from the previous stage. So we can generalize this. If I make just a bit more room. We can say that the volume at the nth stage is 20 over 27 raised to the nth power multiplied by that initial volume. And we just need to ask the question, what happens as the number of steps we take approaches infinity? What happens as this n value gets bigger and bigger as it approaches infinity? So we can use the language of calculus to help us answer this question. We can take what is called a limit. We're looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of this expression, v sub n, the volume at the nth stage. And we can rewrite this as the limit as n goes to infinity of this expression in here, 20 over 27 raised to the nth power multiplied by the initial volume. And the initial volume is some constant. It could be any number we want to start with, but it's a fixed number. And it doesn't change as n gets bigger and bigger. So for now, we can essentially ignore this and just focus on this term right here. And you might notice that this is an exponential expression. In fact, this expression here represents exponential decay. If we had a function f of n, which is 20 over 27 raised to the nth power, and we were to graph this, it would look something like this. And we know this exhibits exponential decay because the base of our exp exponential function is less than one. And if the base is less than one, then as n gets bigger and bigger, the overall expression gets smaller and smaller. And you can test this with a calculator. As you put in higher and higher values of n, you will see that the decimal gets smaller and smaller. And if you put in very large values of n, you will see that the expression becomes very close to zero. In fact, as n approaches infinity, this function, this expression will approach zero. So this part right here will approach zero and you would essentially have zero multiplied by a constant, but zero multiplied by anything is equal to zero. So we would say that in the limit, as n goes to infinity, the volume of this Menger sponge is equal to zero. So if we go back up and look at the original shape, the volume of this fractal when the number of steps is carried out to infinity is equal to zero.